item five. Oh, by the way, I'm Eric Johnson, and we're going through 20 steps to fish health. Essentially, you're here because you figured out that your fish are sick, and you want to know what to do about it. So we've been through <clears throat> four previous considerations, which kind of circulate around water temperature, recent handling, and uh, winter stress. And we talked a little bit about ammonia. Now we're talking about what after ammonia. And that's another water quality test. I'm sure you're absolutely blown away. After you've tested for ammonia, if that's okay, there's another thing to test, and that's nitrites. Nitrites is what ammonia is broken down into. When the beneficial bacteria are on board doing their thing, they uh, convert ammonia into nitrites. And if there aren't any beneficial germs to break down the, uh, the ammonia, the nitrites will, uh, excuse me, if there aren't beneficial bacteria around to break down the uh, nitrites, they accumulate in the system. High nitrites look a little bit different than some of the other water quality parameters. It is in particular a gasping situation because the way nitrites work is they go back into the fish by absorption. It is simply osmosis back into the fish. And the nitrites complex with the bloodstream, and they turn the blood brown. It's called brown blood syndrome in catfish. kills a crap ton of them. Um, in your fish tank, you might not notice brown gills. Um, probably the fish will be dead before you really get them out and look to see if the gills are brown. And, of course, when a fish dies, their gills get all kinds of messed up color anyway. But when the red blood cells get messed up by nitrite, the uh, fish can't breathe, and they start dying. So, uh, again, because that looks like so many other things, it's probably a good idea to go ahead and test your water quality. Test nitrite. There's a dip test for that. Tetra uh, Labs makes a nice dip test that's easy, quick, and gives you a basic idea whether you have an action item. Um, nitrites can be controlled with water changes. They can be controlled with the cultivation or application of beneficial germs to break them down. Um, that's called bioseeding, and that is getting with a filtration system that's established and working, and then um, taking the filtration media, squeezing it out, getting all that brown, gross stuff in a uh, bucket or container, and then just slowly trickling that brown, what I call filter squeezins, putting that brown filter squeezes into your uh, recipient system. So it's a donor-recipient deal. And um, so that's a way of getting bacteria that can um, use nitrites and ammonia and nitrates, whatever. Okay, back to nitrites. Sorry, I digress. Um, nitrites cause the fish to gasp and it can be removed with water changes. It can also be, the effect can be blunted with the application of sodium. Um, hang on. Okay. Um, salt, 0.3% is more than enough to block the uh, reuptake of nitrite um, and decrease the damage that nitrites can do. So my advice to folks when they discover that they have a nitrite problem with a test kit, before they do anything else like treat a parasite, um, is to suspend feeding or reduce it so that there isn't as much nitrogen going into the system to cause a problem. Um, consider partial water changes. Salt the system. Uh, one teaspoon per gallon is adequate. For parasites, you'd use up to three teaspoons per gallon, but for nitrite blocking, one teaspoon per gallon is plenty. If you have live plants, that could be a thing. Uh, uh, just a very certain few soft water South American fish can't handle salt, but even then, one teaspoon per gallon is uh, not an onerous amount. Um, so water changes, reducing feeding, uh, there aren't any nitrite binders, but you could bioseed some bacteria into your system from another system if you have one that's cycled. Um, so that would be item five, basically, is check your nitrite levels. Um, it would be an indicator that the beneficial bacteria are not there yet common in new systems or 
common in systems where you just put an antibiotic in the water and the antibiotic added to the water killed all the beneficial bacteria or at least killed enough beneficial bacteria to where you're starting to see a little traffic jam of nitrogen in the system. So that's a little side sermon on not putting antibiotics directly in the water. More than you wanted to know. Longest conversation about nitrite ever. And is this the one that started with Harley-Davidson motorcycles? 